This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, we did the show without Nathan today. He had an RDO, but we had had a very big weekend in Sydney for Radio's Night of Nights, the Acras, where uh, we were up for the big award. Something dramatic happened when it came to the announcement of that award, uh, and it wasn't that we won. <laughs> yeah, spoiler. absolutely not. Uh, another thing that we happened, it was in Sydney, by the way, and another thing that happened was a couple of stupid things. They actually happened more than once. We'll mm. tell you about them. Yes, uh, we caught up with Rick and Sue, the king and queen of Perth, because tell Telethon is uh, happening this weekend. Let's go! This is Perth Zone. Nathan, Nat and Sean. Yes, on Nova. Nine three seven. It's two past six. Nathan, Nat and Sean. Nathan's got an audio today. So oh, it's just me and Sean. And by the way, Nat, that would be the best audio in history because we had an absolute belter over the weekend. A couple mm. of late nights thrown in there and everyone struggling getting back to Perth yesterday. Well... The man who was most in struggle town for the entire weekend, Sean, was you. I was. <laughs> I was. We had this awards night, everyone, on Saturday night, and I was dying. I we was a shadow win. of myself. Spoiler. Yeah. yeah. Sean was just like um, lightly sweating and just staring straight ahead for the entire evening. <laughs> It was something to behold. It's a trap for young players, everyone. I know. You will, we'll give you a bit of a debrief of the evening later on. Um, but there was, yeah, there was some real moments. But um, the, the, in the group chat that you're not in, Sean, so we can talk about you, yeah. there was um, everyone's giving out the three votes. Three, two, one, you know. Yep. Um, Claire Kelly, who will tell you why a little bit later, but she got three votes for good reason. I gave your hangover two votes. <laughs> and Megan Beard's shoes, one vote, because they broke during the evening. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good times. Good yeah, times yeah. all around. Your hangover really, really stuck in there. God. it's. I think I've got another couple of days of it too, <laughs> to be honest. If you've been waiting to skip the school holiday crowds for your next trip, now's your chance. Yeah, take a sneaky weekend at whatif.com. Just imagine the quick airport check-ins. Book accommodation and more on the What If app. What if it's Aussie for travel? The big thing over the weekend, Natalie, obviously, was the referendum mm. and uh, a, a lot of news about this, negative and positive over mm. the weekend. And I don't see this a great deal of positive stuff coming out. I mean, the, the fact that the yes vote, uh, sorry, the no vote got up, it, it's not really a step forward in any way, I no. thought. No, no, no. But, I, but the I, setup I, leading into it yeah. didn't really give it the chance. I mean, though, there's going to be a lot of post-mortems, obviously, about, you know, what could have been done better and where, you know, the Yes campaign went wrong and that sort of thing. And I think hindsight's magical. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's very, for the Indigenous community, it's pretty disappointing. And I, because it's essentially a wholesale rejection of their, um, you know, what they had written in the Uluru Statement of the Heart, which was their coming together. And, and people, you know, the, uh, the government at the time had asked them what they wanted and they told everybody what they wanted. And yeah. then we went, nah. And you go, that's pretty disappointing. Yeah, state by state other than Canberra was the one. It's, yeah. Even in the NT. But I guess um, working on numbers, the Indigenous population still up there, probably about 15%. Uh, yeah, they, they, there's an article on news.com today about how Indigenous people did vote. So that must have you know, narrowed it down to um, predominantly Indigenous communities and they did vote overwhelmingly. Yes, 73%, yes. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that was. Yeah. Across, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but um, I think a lot of people wanted the detail and wanted this to be yeah. uh, fleshed out more. I think also that the, the, the way the no campaign was run, misinformation, there's no, there's no consequence for misinformation. So you can muddy the waters. You can, and even when other people go, no, no, that's not right, the misinformation's already done its done its damage. Yeah, I do find yeah. that that's politics, though, Nat. Yeah, I know. And and that, over this over the journey. The, the problem is, Sean, I don't think this should have should been about politics. politics. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Fair call. Um, the, the, When there was a referendum in, I don't know, was it the 60s, about whether Indigenous people should be counted as citizens and or, you know, people, oh from the, uh, which yeah. is extraordinary, um, that got bipartisan support because both parties realised that it's not political. It's, it's, it's above that. And I think that's what... I, I know that's what Albo hoped would have happened in this case, but it didn't, and it turned into a, a political argument. Should he have seen? Should he foreseen have this? That. Because everybody was saying one hundred percent. I even threw the question out to him the other mm. day, and he goes, "Well, well, hopefully it'll be a turnaround." But yeah. the numbers were so far against, and it proved to be the what happened over the yeah, weekend. I know. That maybe. I mean, because people were saying it should have been postponed yes. months ago yeah. for them to get the information out and to really get the campaign going um, for everybody in the yeah. community to understand what this is all about. There were clearly some strategic errors in the way the campaign yeah. was rolled out, clearly. But, I mean, I don't know what the way forward is. 
Because it's not like we're just never going to address the Indigenous people again. Like, it's we don't... The conversation can't stop there. No, 100%. So, yeah, we have to keep looking forward and moving towards reconciliation somehow, but... 100%. It's a major roadblock. Yeah, I would have thought oh. so. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Sean Taylor Swift there uh, with Cruel Summer, but her era's movie tour... Like so, it's the it's movie, movie of her, of her concert. concert. It set box office records in uh, the US and Canada, highest grossing concert movie of all time. It made ninety six million dollars just in those two territories. Now, I was just reading before that a hundred million dollars worth of pre sale tickets were yes. sold, biggest ever, and it's yes. just shot for the Los Angeles three concerts she yes. had in and, LA. And people basically, everybody's loving it, and they're treating it like a concert. So instead of going to a movie where you sit in your seat, they're literally rushing down and standing in front of the. <laughs> movie screen like they're at a concert. <laughs> it's ridiculous. absolutely amazing. And for a lot of people, because they missed out on concert tickets, this is the only way that they can see it. So it's like they're at the concert. Oh, this is and right over the Does this seem over the top? Swifty went to the premiere in America and she was dancing along like she was just a punter at her own concert. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? I did see that she stepped out for the first time with Travis Kelsey, yeah. two holding hands. Everyone's mm. like all in Losing love with their her minds. now. But geez, this movie, she could be one of the the, the highest grossing movies of all time. It is at the U, in the UK yeah. and Ireland at the moment. But I, I saw a meme of, um, uh, of Swifty and Beyonce standing together and it was basically the greatest economic minds of our time had a meeting. And it's like, yeah, so they're basically keeping the US economy afloat oh, at this not stage wrong. between the two of them. Swifty. Unbelievable. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. So, as you know, we were away in Sydney from, we got there Thursday night. Yep. Um, and got back yesterday. Lots of misadventures, weren't there, Sean? Certainly was. When Nathan and I, <clears throat> we were there on uh, Thursday night, we... Yeah, you uh, had a slightly a fly, a later flight than me. Yeah. yeah. We're Because we're like the royal family, we can't all fly on the one Just in case, you know, just in case the plane goes down. Anyway, so Nathan and I... Uh, I, I uh, ordered an Uber for us, yes. and I put in the Uber. Porterhouse Hotel was the name of the place we're staying yes. at. And uh, I didn't really look at the address. I just pressed yes. the button, and away we went. And the Uber driver takes us to this place, the Porterhouse Hotel, which was an abandoned... A- an abandoned Irish pub. Yes. And so and, when we got there, I was why like... why do Ooh. I know that, Sean? Well, Nat knows that because the very next day when we were leaving a photo shoot that we were doing all together, um, I once again ordered the Uber and I ordered the same place, the Porterhouse Hotel, which the guy took us to the abandoned building again. I did it twice in a row. As we pull up, Sean goes, oh, <laughs> I've, I've done it again. And I'm like, oh, Sean. But I wasn't the only one who had a moment no, like well, that. I, well, I go, yeah, you're, you're such an idiot, Sean. So um, after that, that same day, Sean, you invited me out with some of your friends to go on a boat on the harbour, which was a great... We had yeah, a great it was day, day, wasn't it? It was day. a great day. It was a great day until we picked up Steph from Foxtel. Let's name her. Um, and she, her contribution to the afternoon was a bottle of tequila, um, which was duly consumed. And then things went south from there. But um, I, it was, it was like it was evening by this stage, so yes. I had been wearing my sunglasses. I'd take them; they were on, sitting on top of my head. And at one stage, Steph sort of grabbed me around the neck, ah, like that, you know, mates, ah. Yes. And my sunglasses tipped off the back of my head and they went over the rail and they landed on a little ledge near one of the engines of the boat. And we're like, oh, look at that, that's a close call. And the skipper, Gerard, came and leant over and sort of had to go to climb down onto the ledge and get them for me, brings them back. And th- so then, instead of putting them in my bag for safekeeping... Yeah, of course. Um, ..I put them back on the top of my head and about two minutes later, Steph grabbed me again and they just went back straight over the side of the boat to the bottom of Sydney Harbour, never to be seen again. And I did not learn my lesson the first time. I know. Well, both of us didn't in those circumstances. Yes, we yes. wanted to actually open this up to see yeah. if people have been so stupid we to do something twice. We can't be the only ones. It was something so stupid that you did it twice. We're going to have a prize. Pre- yeah, we have. We've got a $300 to spend at Matilda Bay Restaurant. Oh. You can check out their wedding and event showcase on October 29. Register now at matildabayrestaurant.com. Dot au, but you're so stupid you did it twice. Sharon's in Limwood. Did you do something stupid twice, Sharon? No, it was my it was my dad. Mm. Um, we used to he used to hang out at the yacht club a lot, and this particular one has a dog leg to wear um, a jetty on our way to the boat. Yep. And he cleaned in the club, had a bit of drink, walked down to go and sleep on the boat that night, and just kept going, didn't take the turn, and missed ended the dog up. leg. <laughs> yep. Walked off the end of the jetty. The next night, he was walking down there, hadn't had anything to drink, but he was telling his mate what he'd done. 
did exactly the same thing again. <laughs> Probably without the alcohol, managed to get his rope, um, arm caught on a rope and um, dissipated his shoulder. Oh, oh, Sharon. Sharon, that's embarrassing. The first time you got an excuse because you had yes, a few right. beers. The second time you but just... But as you're telling somebody about how you did this stupid thing, you do yeah. this stupid thing, that's actually yep. amazing. Is is your dad okay? <laughs> Um, yeah, now he is. It was a few years ago. Oh, God. Amazing effort. Well done, Sharon's dad. Uh, Bryson's bell divers. Hello. Morning, guys. How are you? Hey, good, good Bryce. buddy. Okay. Did you do something really stupid twice? Yeah, it's pretty basic, but had kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how but, stupid um, a decision was it the first time, Bryce? Oh, I mean... Not really when they're born, but when they get older and get a bit of an attitude, it's pretty fun. Yeah. But um, the kick, the kicker is, so we we decided, you know, we're we're two and done sort of thing. I went and had the old neuter and whatever, and still feeling a bit sorry for myself recently, and um, just found out that before I even went and got the neuter, we're having number three. So. Oh, bro. Oh, so you've made the decision to have the vasectomy. We're like, we're done. That's it, vasectomy. But you, the damage is yep. already done. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Bryce. Oh, that's costly, Bryce. I know, I know. But anyway, it's... Uh, it's, oh, it's going to be amazing. I mean, the number three is going to feel really welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah. There will so be the a point... The wife wants a girl, so fingers crossed. <laughs> there will be a point at some stage during this child's life, Bryce, where you go, yeah, that I wish I'd booked that vasectomy sooner. <laughs> Lucky yeah, they're so cheap sure. these days, Bryce. That's the good news. <laughs> oh, Bryce, that's too funny. <laughs> um, actually, Bryce, we've got $300 to spend at Matilda Bay it. Restaurant. You need to take your wife out. You need to take her out for dinner before she has the baby because you'll be doing nothing after this. You can check out their wedding and events showcase on October 29. You register now at matildabayrestaurant.com.au. It's a beautiful place, Matilda Bay. Get on board. All yours, Bryce. Well done. Nathan, Nat and Sean. Podcast. <laughs> Nova's 20K Mystery Voices. Oh, my God. I listen to Nova. ABC Blinds have up to 40% off in their October sale, and we've got 20K to give away with our Mystery Voices. Look, we leave this place unsupervised for, like, one day, and a voice goes off, Sean. That means we are just one voice away from someone scoring $20,000. It's amazing. We want this done today, if we can. Yes. We're so close. How about we have a listen to the voices? I listen to Nova... Mm, you know yeah. which one we're looking for, by the way? Oh, I've heard rumours. All right. Mm. Um, why don't you run us through the clues and then I'll give us the new clue. Okay, the first clue that we heard early days was one of the voices is an Australian comedian. So mm. a lot of people have yeah, know who think, this is now. We know who that is, yes. Clue number two was Matilda's. Yes. We kind of got there pretty quickly, that so. one. Clue number three, one of the voices is a Grammy Award winning artist. Now, that was the person who was guest on Friday. Mm. Clue number four. One of the voices was in Friday's Naughties at Nine. Mm, that was the giveaway, they, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they kind of combined together three and four. New clue time. All right, get a load of this. Clue number five. The last remaining voice is a TV star. TV star. Gee, that was excellent, by the way, Harry. So, yeah, super work, Harry, Bloody on the hell, buttons. Mate. Um, the last remaining voice is a TV star. Think about well, that. that. Narrows it down. Oh, let's hear the voices then. I listen to Nova. Mm, right. Mm, mm. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, it um, is. We don't know, by the way. They don't tell us anything. If you want to play, now would be a really good time to call. Can Michelle from Warwick get the job done? Hi, Michelle. Hi, guys. Michelle, this is very exciting. We're down to the one voice to get this twenty thousand dollars. This is uh, this is amazing. Very now, exciting. Have you been working with all the clues? I have been. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. And you've been listening along, so you know which voices have been successful so far. I have been listening. Yes. Michelle, this is the way it's done. All right. Let's have a listen to the voices. I listen to Nova. Let's hear this clue for one more Brand time. Brand new clue. The last remaining voice is a TV star, Michelle. Does that help? Oh, um, well, it doesn't really narrow it down. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have a stab. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Michelle, for $20,000, give us the four mystery voices in order, please. Okay. Courtney Vine, mm -hmm. Shakira, Aunt Middleton, 
and Dilruk Jayasinha. Dilruk. <laughs> All right. Shakira, Ant Middleton. So, Courtney so Vine. in the order you think it's Courtney Vine, Shakira. Yep. Shakira is her last name. Shakira, Shakira. Yep. <laughs> Ad Middleton <laughs> and Dilruk J. Singer. Yep, lock it in. All right. It's Michelle. locked in. Michelle. $20,000. What would you be doing with $20,000? It would give you a bit of relief. Michelle, I would have thought. A holiday, I think. Yeah. Mm, mm. Mm, everyone wants a holiday. Yeah, everybody does want a holiday. Okay. <laughs> Michelle. We can yeah. confirm... That you have three correct. Okay. In the right spot. And you know which ones you got, right? Don't you? I know. Keep plugging away. We still need that extra voice. I know. The last remaining voice is a TV star. Have a think about it, everybody. This is the Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. It was the night of nights for radio on Saturday night, Sean. Certainly was. So we're over in Sydney and we were at the uh, big convention centre there. It was uh, it was an interesting start for us, Nat, because we got told we had to go uh, quarter past six, just walk the red carpet. Well, we were because we were nominated for the big award, with the big award of the night, right? The last one. They they're like, oh yeah, no, they want to talk to you. And um, Angela Bishop from Channel Ten definitely wants to talk to you. Angela Bishop had no idea who we were. She had no idea that we'd been nominated. She, like somebody, so our publicist, the network publicist told her that we were from Perth. That's all she knew. And she asked some very generic Perth questions and then moved on. And we walked away going, yeah, no, she had no clue. It's really funny. I know when we sit over here a lot of the times, we, we know that everything's run from the East Coast and no one. And people um, who are in national businesses know this. When you're over here, you always have this thing that no one gives two rats' asses. We're a colonial outpost, That's John. right. <laughs> but everyone from the East Coast, I say, no, you're very important. You're great. You're important. All our people, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when we did walk the red carpet, it was just another moment of just going, no, I know where we sit. I know. And it's right and they, to the left. They're like, I oh, just stand there and they'll take some photos. And you see the photographers going, oh, God. Okay, quick. And somebody <laughs> pretend you're taking photo of them. All right, move on, move on. It was just... Anyway, so that's how we felt. But, you know, it's a glittering it's a glittering night. And um, the big award of the night is the best on-air team, and they give that away it's the very last award. So that was the one that we were nominated in, which was extraordinary. No one... I don't. We don't believe anybody from Perth has been nominated before. It's very unusual. It's normally Sydney and Melbourne, big network shows, you know, all the ones you've heard of, Kyle and Jackie O and that kind of thing. So we didn't go there with any... Um preconceived ideas that we would win but once you got there, because we always were like, oh who cares, you know, we got nominated, big deal bit of a pity one to yeah. start with, but once we got there, person after person was telling us that they thought we'd, we'd win. We'd I win. know, yeah, and they, they, this is the evidence, our table was up the front yep. um, Kyle wasn't there Kyle and so Jackie like, O Kyle's, is it, if, if Kyle would be there if he was going to win. Yep. That's, that was the theory. So Kyle's not there. Um, what else was there? The fact that the betting had come right oh, in. Yes. Like we were paying $9 to start with. We were into $3. Sports, uh, sports bet ran a, ran a book on it. Yeah, we had shortened in the odds. That just means our mates put money on us. Yeah, but again, the whole time now, none of us thought we were going to win. But as the night went on, we get closer. Because it went on forever, right? It's the Ever. longest. They give out... 80 awards, 80. And there were two um, uh, Hall of Fame inductees who both spoke for about 20 minutes each. I could have pushed that. We, I could have pushed them off the stage. It was that like was we were reliving their careers, glittering careers, amazing, amazing careers, but it was like we relived them in real time. <laughs> just a just note for anyone who's making a speech, when people start talking because they're overhearing you, it's time to get off. But anyway, back to the point. So it, it gets get, down to the nitty-gritty now. So, so they... Um, uh, they, they, then they moved the presentation to the... There was kind of the catwalk at the front mm. of the stage. So they moved the presentation to this front of this catwalk because Ian Moss, Ian Moss from Cold Chisel was setting up. So his crew was setting up behind for that because they were kind of like their closing act. And so that moves to the front. They're going, oh, this is... We're getting down to the serious ones now. And they were announcing... So the nominees had been read. So a voiceover reads the nominees for, I think it was Best Metro Talk Presenter or something. I believe it was, yes. And then... Kip Whiteman, who I think he's worked here. I think he's from Perth. Is he from Perth? Yeah. Um, he, uh, but he's based in Brisbane now. He opens the envelope and 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 says, "Best on air team, Metro, Jonesy and Amanda." And we all went, "That's our category." He's just read the winners for the wrong award. And it, what he's read, he's blown the result of the big award of the night. So it was at 
the one we were nominated for and which clearly we hadn't won at that point. And so then Jonesy <laughs> made a jump up and everybody's going, what's happening? And then they, you can see the people scrambling in the control room. So they put up the on the big screen the sort of still of them wanting it. And then... Then they take it down again. And then they're like, what do we do? And the, you could see the poor guy, Kip, is on his phone, like reading something, like an was. email on his phone that must have been, you know, what the award winners are or the categories. He's trying to make sense but about it. It was just the, a debacle. But then on the screen they put up a picture of this guy, Ray Hadley, who's mm. big over on the East Coast. They hadn't actually announced that he had won an That's award right. too. So then that came back on. So, so he was, was the one mistakes. they should have announced. Oh, it was just disaster. But we're sitting there. because We're cause sitting it was... there. It's like such an absolute fizzer. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> before they get to the main one, so we then, know that so we haven't won. We hadn't even heard that bit where they go, and the nominees are, and the, the, they would say, Nathan and Sean, number nine three seven, so we could go, oh, look, we're in with a chance, because we knew at that point that we weren't in with the chance. <laughs> they made the like announcement. Like, it was, it was such an the absolute... Like, remember when um, uh, Australia's Next Top Model, poor Sarah Murdoch, announced the wrong winner? So... Because the voting was so close that, and nobody was telling her any ear, so she just went with the most recent update that she'd had. Yes, and it was the wrong one. She calls the <laughs> calls the winner up that she thinks the, is the winner, and then in her ear they're going, "No, that's the wrong one." And then she had to tell this girl to her face, "Oh wait, no, it's not you. It's the other one." <laughs> I mean. Awkward. <laughs> it's just awkward all well, around. Well, it was awkward at the time. We had a good laugh over it the I whole know. time. Where we so going? Funny. Of course, that brilliant. happens to us. Yep. We want to hear about people's uh, people who botched the big moment. Maybe yes. the big announcement that they were yep. supposed to make, and someone handed them the wrong thing. Maybe they they came up with they said they called the wrong name. Perhaps maybe you said the wrong name in your wedding vows. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's botching a big announcement. <laughs> <laughs> you just. You'd walk out of the church by yourself, I would imagine, at that point. <laughs> it could happen, Sean. It could happen. A $150 Atlas fuel voucher now. Find your local WA-owned and operated fuel supply at atlasfuel.com.au. But we are talking about those big yes. moments. Big announcements. The big moment. Was it botched? Hit us up. Joe's in Secret Harbour. Hello. Hey, how you going? All hey, right, Joe. Joe. So we are talking about when the big moment got botched. What happened? Well, um, I just have a little bit of a peeve. My name's jo- Joanna. Yeah. Um, and I just got a little pet peeve about not being called Joanne, so I've shortened it to Joe for many, many years. Mm. Um, the um, final day came, my husband and I were getting married, and my celebrant said the wrong name, and I'm like, oh, well, I accept it, you know, from her, that's fine. But he repeated it, <laughs> and it was at the time, I'm like, I said, no, I'm not doing it because you said the wrong name. <laughs> you, and said, then, <laughs> you, you stopped, and you said that, we, Joe. But in jest, yes, and yes. the whole crowd, the whole crowd laughed up. It showed how nervous he was, and it just broke the ice, and everything was fine. And um, next week is our twentieth wedding anniversary, oh. so I did, I did forgive him. Yeah, you but didn't it walk was, off. Um, no, I didn't walk off. That's pretty funny, though, to actually call him on it in that moment as a, as a joke. But that's funny. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I guess it was funny at the time, when the, but yeah, when the celebrant. It gets the wrong name, and you've heard it in your mind. Oh, I mean, I'm, I know. I, I can relate to this. Yes. At least Joanne and Joanna are, are close. Yep. Um, it could have been much worse if he'd said Stephanie or something. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Joe. Tegan's in Port Kennedy. Hello. Hello. How are you going? Hey, Great, Tegan. Tegan. So, did the uh, big moment get botched? What happened? Yeah, I guess similar to the past one. Uh, I'm in a same sex relationship. So, me and my partner are getting married in 2012, and the celebrant's about to announce. And it's like, oh, please welcome Mr. and Mrs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> two women. <laughs> uh, did, did people laugh somebody... or did everyone like go, oh, what a mistake I to make? the only thing you can do is laugh. Yeah, yeah. that's true, too. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess we can look back and laugh about it now and, you know, still together 10 years later. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so child, but yeah, yeah, it was funny at the time. <laughs> oh, that's awkward. That's awkward, though. Yeah, that's funny. He must have died. Like, was it a male or female um, it celebrant? It was a lady. It was a lady. Yeah. She but... must have died in that moment. She, <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> clearly, she's just a creature of habit. And then, um, yeah, wrong one. Oh, too funny. Couldn't Thanks, Tegan. It. Good on you, Tegan. We've got a $150 Atlas fuel voucher, actually, Tegan. That's going to come to you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> See, anyway. there's something positive came out of it all. Well done. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast.
They hear everybody, the king and Ta-da! queen of Perth Good TV. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> hey, Welcome back. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Rick, we were just talking about you said congratulations and being nominated for the, the Radio mm. Awards, which yeah, well we did. Done. You guys have won plenty of awards over yes. the journey, so you're not forgotten when you're here in WA. Well, when you were talking about uh, your awards, it reminded me of the Logies, the long night, sitting at the oh, back, yes. and you were oh, sitting at the yeah. very front. I line. know, they put us right up the front. By the way, Angela Bishop sends her regards. <laughs> <laughs> she does it because she's got no idea who we are, um, which is beautiful. Now, of course, the reason you're here, yes. it's Telethon Week. It is. I mean, yes. it comes around God, so It does, doesn't it? We were only here yesterday. It seems that way, yeah. <laughs> God, and your uh, Telethon is such an amazing thing for Perth it's to get an behind. institution, yeah. The amount of money. Do we know what we're up to? Well, it was about raised. seventy-one million yeah. last year. I mean, yep. the total is what's the, what's the total? Oh yeah, it's big. Oh, it's it's big. Many, 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 many. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, lots of millions. Lots of millions. <laughs> it is yes. amazing. Not a, not a billion, but close. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this year. <laughs> a lot yeah. of entertainment coming over. Jimmy Barnes over too. So yeah, we're nice. really looking forward to it. So it should and be a great Marsha telecast. Hines. Marsha Hines as well. So she's she making a comeback. Marsha Hines. I did see that. Hey, Rick. Before we get into some other stuff, you've just lowered the seat so you can come down to our level. Nathan's seat right. Yeah. Now he'll oh, get the, the shits r- on the in a big rat. way. <laughs> the rat. But he's not a short ass, is he? No, no, no he's no. tall. Yeah. But he, he doesn't. Like, oh, he likes to be the king of the studio. He he? really <laughs> hates people messing with his chair. Like, really hates it. It's like his number one bugbear. So a bit like me, I come in on Mondays and someone's adjusted the yeah. chair on the weekend too. Yeah. So it's sitting it's up right outrage. high. So Nathan, I, if you're listening, I appreciate what you go yeah. through. But Nathan, if Rick you're listening, it was him that moved it. in the studio. Does Let he? me tell you, it's okay. a throne, it, you it might say. Throne. It's about this wide <laughs> and it's very tall. <laughs> what are you trying to say about my backside? I was going to say, you know, that's not required. Uh, funny. It's what? a big chair. Really? Did you demand a big chair? No, no, I just went in. It was the only one available. It looked comfortable. <laughs> the crazy thing about our desk because it's really high, so you can't have a normal chair. Yeah, right. It's sort of like, you know, it's like a bench height sort of thing. Yep. Yes. And a few of us like those kneeling chairs too, and trying to find those is really, really difficult. So, Do you have to step up onto your set and up to your... We do. We yeah, do. where you're... Yep. Yeah. And there's a green screen there, as most people know now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. it says, do not step on the green screen. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so you're tiptoeing so past. Go, no, 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 we all step on it. And, of course, you, there's no pants on under the desk, right? That's the rule. Uh, well, <laughs> no more shorts. The old days, actually, funny story in the old days. Yeah. I used to play footy on a weekend and, yes. uh, you know, come into the studio. In after, your footy shorts. And occasionally I'd, you know, leave the long pants out because it was a casual day. And one yes. day I was wearing these red shorts. I was playing for uh, Nolamara, local team. Yes. Right? And uh, someone said, the boss is in. And I thought, bloody hell, I've got shorts on under the desk. So you've got the full, the, the shirt, the tie, the suit jacket. And footy shorts? That was a long time ago, by the way. But fortunately, the boss was wearing shorts too, so oh, I got away. Oh, there you go. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's a good look, isn't it? Well, um, yeah, Sean? Well, we are going to be playing a little game called Dream Team. Now, we played it last I year. we did. Yeah, yeah, we played it last year, all to do with raising money for Telethon. Yeah. Mm. And um, we're going to have somebody play with you at home, which yes. is going to be good. We'll tell you more about that shortly. Remember, uh, come the weekend when Telethon is in full swing, uh, you need to practice saying the number. Can you one three hundred seven three seven five zero seven. There you go. Beautiful. Gosh, she's good. You didn't know that, did no. you? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the teamwork, right? So one, as long as one only of one knows. of you has to know everything at any given moment. All right, we're going to tell you how you can be a part of Dream Team shortly, and there's something in it for you, something significant in it for you as well. Dream Team, just a dream. Dream Team, I have a dream. Dream Team for Telethon 2023. These three might be the dream team, but if you make a telethon donation at any Spud Shed store from now until Sunday, October 22, you'll get a free one kilo bag of spuds. So good, here we are. We're playing dream team for telethon along with our very good friends at Spud Shed. Now, we have our contestants. Well, it's Dave and Sam who are going to be teamed up with Rick and Sue this morning. Hopefully there's some muscle memory because we did play Mm. with Rick and Sue last Mm. time. Dave, Hello. Hello. As the first one through, Dave, you get to choose whose team you would like to be on. Do you want to be on Rick's nah. team or Sue's team? I'll go for Rick. Oh, go on, Rick. Dave. <laughs> okay. All right, Dave, you're with Rick. That's no worries at all. So, Sam, that means that you are going to be with the lovely Sue. That's all right. It's the winning team. It's the yeah. winning team. Oh, thanks, the boys Sam. versus the girls. Yeah, it's the battle of the sexes. Okay. <laughs> Here is the drill. So, um, Rick and Dave, you'll be going first. Yeah. Um, so we will be showing you little flashcards that have items. They're just things. 
everyday things. You can describe it to Dave with yep. th- only three words. Yep. You could you just use two words if you think. You yep. can't repeat anything that's actually in the word. Okay. No rhyming. Yep. No general dodginess, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Must be three words. Now, either of you can pass at any time. So, if, Rick, if you yeah. have no way to describe it, you can pass. And, Dave, if you have no clue, you can pass as well. But you can have more than one guess for any item as well, Dave, okay? No, the idea no is to worries. get as many answers as possible because for every correct guess, we're donating 100 bucks to Telethon. Let's go, and Dave. on the line, no. a $1,000 Spudshed voucher no. and a Telethon Snuggle hoodie up for grabs. <laughs> 60 seconds on the clock. Rick Dave. and Dave. Righto, Dave. Your time starts Dave. now. You mow it. Lord mower. No, try again. <laughs> you mow it. You mow it. The grass. Yes. <laughs> Green That's grass. Tough grass. Dave. <laughs> tough start, Dave. Next. <sighs> Hang on. Come Snags on. on it. Pardon? Snags on it. Sausages. No, snags on it. Uh, barbecue. Yes. Jeez, Dave. Shelter under it. I don't know, I can Shelter under it. Uh, undercover. Time. Look at time. No. Quick, time's up. Oh, Dave, clock, even here. Clock. Dave, you there? <laughs> Dave. <laughs> okay, they, Dave him. and Rick got, got two. So that's $200 for Telethon. Uh, yeah, Dave. Uh, Sam, we've Sue, got a chance. Sue and Sam, the score to beat is two. <laughs> That was terrible by you two. And that's coming from me. That's coming from me, and I'm, like, I'm horrendous at this game. All right. All right, Sam, so we need some money. Your 60 seconds starts now. Wax, flame, light. Candle. Yes. Blow up floats. Float. No. Pass. Do you want another guess? No, pass. Okay, pass. that was balloon. Stops being burnt. Can you repeat that? Stops being burnt. Fire? No. Fire. no. Stops being burnt. Pass. pass. That was oh, green. <laughs> Divides neighbours. Okay. Yes. Girls wear them. Dresses. Bras. Keep going. Good. Yes. Good. Yeah. Well um, Organise. <laughs> <laughs> you just say it. Oh, that's not for TV. Organise oh, stuff on. Yeah. Yeah. Hairbrush was that. <laughs> Hairbrush was that one. That was tricky. But um, Sam and Sue have taken it out with the... Dizzyingly Woo! high score of three. Well done. Uh, <laughs> she did well Jeez. today. That means, Sam, you have scored a $1,000 Spud Chef oh, voucher and a, a telethon <laughs> snuggle <laughs> hoodie is all yours as well. And so far, oh, you, we've raised $500 for telethon. Oh, okay, that's yeah. a good start. Well, thank you, Sue. Thanks that's a pleasure, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Well Gee, done, we Sam. really hit the heights well, today. Well, we did. <laughs> it's a bit of a rocky start. Uh, yeah. Well, Dave we've got all week to get saying. back. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> was on the game. Um, if everybody's liking the sound of the telephone snuggle of hoodies, they're limited edition. You need to buy them. You can buy them from telethon7.com. All the proceeds, of course, go to Telethon, but they are available for sale. They're beautiful. And they are beautiful, and all the kids would love them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, these not, are awesome. not to mention the adults as too. And can I say for the kids, speaking of kids, yep. there's the Telethon Family Festival presented by Coles Sunday on, well... October 22nd, it is. That's the date, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's just outside RAC Arena. It's, yeah, it's right. Great. Looking forward. And you can buy tickets to the opening and closing of Telethon. Just go to Ticketek and be in the audience. Be part of and the fun. And of course, fun. it all yeah. kicks off Saturday night. It yeah, does. the Looking weather's going to be good it. on the weekend, so yeah. outside it'll be fine. 26 oh, hours nice. of raising money for our kids. Let's do it, WA. Let's go. All yeah. right, RAC Arena, get along there. Nice work. Thank you so much, King and Queen. Off to the <laughs> beach with you now. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean. Podcast.
Time for us to get out of here, Sean. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dream Team's going to be back tomorrow, actually, Nat. Well, it is. <laughs> it, w- it wasn't a triumph this morning. It wasn't the triumph we were hoping for for launch day, you know what I mean? Can, I, did... can I jump in here because yeah. I got the audio of what happened? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, Rick, it's three words, right? Three words. Um, and Dave, very funny guy, the very first question you did, well, I'll try to answer this one. You mow it. Lord mower. <laughs> There's you a rocky start. You mow it. <laughs> well, I mean, he's in the ca- he's in the ballpark, but grass is... Okay, okay, the other one was, um, Rick asked him, the second one um, was barbecue. Mm. Mm. And Rick said, you cook snags on it. No, well, it, oh. snags on it snags is what he said. Because three words, Sean. Okay, snags on it. You still haven't grasped the concept, have you? <laughs> <laughs> And he said barbecue. No, yeah. what did he say? He said sausages. <laughs> he said sausages. <laughs> mm. We wish it said barbecue because that was the answer. That was. <laughs> should have got the audio of that one too. Short uh, this combo. Jeez, anyway. Ross. You guys had a big weekend, didn't you? Yep. Mm. It was solid. It was solid. Yeah. Sean led me astray. Yeah. Just okay. so you know. And by the, the way, first time I've ever seen you in short snap. Rocking at 36, 36 degrees. degrees. Yeah, it's a day to do it. I've still got fake tan from the weekend, so I thought today's the day. If you're going to do it, today's the day. <laughs> well done. If you missed the clue as well for our 20K Mystery Voices, I'll repeat that shortly. But um, I'm going to tell you now, the last remaining voice is a TV star. <laughs> Don't bother listening to me unless you enjoy the naughties at nine. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.